What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video we're looking at Rugby Passes World 15 which they created for you guys or us as rugby fans to select. Over the past few weeks they've been selecting different positions where fans could select who they would um, have in their World 15 squad. Now the final results are in which they released yesterday. I'll leave the link in the description down below. And the Springboks in England dominated the squad, which you probably think would happen when they were in the finals. But there's some interesting decisions that were made within the squad that I might make a tweak or two. But hey, we're all entitled to our own opinions. Let me know which players you would replace or keep in in the squad. Number one, we start with Maka Vinopolo. I mean, crikey, he's a machine in his own. A little bit, everyone's... Not sure whether or not to select him, but for me, out of experience, and I know I selected him for my British and Irish Lions squad, it, it, um, I would have probably picked him too. But I would have also looked at um, Scott Seo from Australia or even uh, South African known Stephen Kitsoff. And if we're going in the past, the beast would probably be my first selection. Number two, we got Malcolm Marks. Um, interesting selection, yeah. I didn't think that he would win, but maybe with the talks of um, how the World Cup went because Bonambi played but Rossi seemed to really rotate the two well in the Rugby World Cup. Um, England's Jamie George was also there and um, then you got Dan Coles who's an all-black legend. I'm happy with Malcolm Marks and um, he was rated as one of the best at a time. I didn't think he had the strongest year in 2019 but um, solid pick. I won't argue too much there. Number three they've gone with Ty for long. No argument there, I would have probably selected him too. Kyle Sinclair was one of the finalists with him, but I would have gone um, with Ty Falong. Solid man who's been an absolute force for Ireland. Four, you've gone with Maratoja. This is the toughest battle because you've got James Ryan, Achis Neymar, Brody Retallick, Eben Etzebeth. Obviously, they've got him in, but on number five. So this was a tough one. But uh, Maratoj has just gone from strength to strength and I've got no argument with him in the squad. I mean, you obviously want your Brody Retallics and your James Ryans in. But if we look at what Maratoj achieved last year, can't argue there. Even Etzebeth, again, probably would have been, uh, if you overseas fan, probably would have gone with um, Alan Wynne Jones, but for me Eben just stood out. Even with the whole controversy drama, he never let it get to him. Absolute brilliant player. Six, Peter Steph the toy, no arguments there. I would have selected him too. It's a tough one because you've got Tom Curry, um, who's obviously been an absolute machine for England, but World Cup winning, World Cup rugby or sorry, World Rugby Player of the Year. Can't argue with uh, Peter Steph the toy. Ardi Dev Ardi Sevier comes in at seven. Awesome, another phenomenal player who who's just been absolutely brilliant with the All Blacks and an absolute powerhouse. No argument. Dwayne Vermeulen comes in at number eight. This is a, a, a position that's very strong if we look at the world. You've got Billy Vinopolo. I mean, Artie can play number eight as well if he wants to. There's some great machines in world rugby. Peter Armani. I mean, we've, we've seen some phenomenal stuff coming from the number eight position. But um, I'm happy with Dwayne. I think he's been an absolute brute force for the Springboks and I rate him highly. Number nine, this was an interesting one. The Battle of the Scrum Offs, my favorite position. You got Ben Yang's England, you got Aaron Smith, you got Connor Murray, but no argument there. Woke up winning, Faf de Clark, the cheekiest bugger alive. What a player and um, brilliant player, so can't argue there. Number 10, this is where we get interesting because Bowden Barrett was selected, but Bowden played a lot at 15 in order to accompany Richie Mwanga. So I probably would have done this a little bit differently. I would have had Bowden as my fullback and I would have put Andre Pollard in as number 10 just because of what he achieved in the year. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. Um, no disrespect to Finn Russell or the other, or to, to um, the man himself, but I just feel, I know Bowden's brilliant and I will have him in my squad. But I just felt Andre Pollard might should have been there. We got 11, Semi Radraja got selected. This was a good battle between obviously your, your Colby's, um, your obviously Colby's in the team, but the way they set it up, you've got uh, Kenki Fukuwa, 
sorry, Japanese player, brilliant. You've got Mapimpi, James May. I mean, there's some cracking wings right now. Um, but uh, they've gone with Semi Rodrigo, can't argue there. Absolute powerhouse. Owen Farrell, 12, would have done the same thing. I know there are other great centres out there. Uh, Karevi, Damien Delando. But um, for me, I can't argue with that. Owen Farrell, just from a strength point of view, I would have also selected him. Manu Tuolagi. Um, yeah, it's a battle between him and Jonathan Davies. I probably would have gone with the Welsh side of, for Dor- Jonathan. Um, just of the experience, Tuolagi is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. But um, I would have gone Jonathan Davies. But both are equally genius. 14 shares in goal, but you got no arguments there. Also, brilliant with um, Johnny May, could have been there, Josh Adams, etc., etc. But Colby was just outstanding in the Rugby World Cup. And then, last but not least, the Scotsman, Mr. Stuart Hogg. Again, can't argue much there. You know, Damien McKenzie was in the final with Stuart Hogg in this battle of who to select. Damien McKenzie, I reckon, is going to be the next future king of this position. Um, Stuart Hogg is brilliant, but again, would I have selected him? I would have maybe gone Bowden Barrett just from an experience. So 10, Pollard, 12, Farrell, 15. you got Bowden Barrett. Just think of those three amazing rugby players. Um, I rate them all highly strong. But, um, yeah, Stuart Hogg, no disrespect or argument there. One of the world's finest. Phenomenal team that they've selected. So, interesting choices from the fans of Rugby Pass World 15. Phenomenal team, great team, no arguments, except maybe one or two. But, great, great selection. So, well done, fans. Well done, Rugby Pass. Click on the link down below if you want to read more into the detailed um, instructions as to how they selected it. It was an awesome, awesome campaign. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you real soon for another one. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers.